So lastly, I just want to go through um, a curve sketching example, give us another opportunity to practice finding this intervals of increase and decrease, um, and see some other kinds of behavior that, that can result when we go through and do this process. So our goal here is to not only find intervals of increase and decrease, locations of mids and maxes, concavity and inflection points, but to also then use that information to sketch a graph of the function. And here we've got um, the function, the log of x to the fourth plus 27. So the first thing I need to do is, is find my derivative. I also need to identify the domain. So we're dealing with some, some nice functions at the moment. The domain of this function, normally for a log function, the domain has to be all the x values where that inside part is greater than zero. But x to the fourth is always going to be positive. So x to the fourth plus 27 will always be positive. So the domain of this function is all real numbers. So now to talk about our derivative, I got to use my log rules, uh, or excuse me, my derivative of a log rule. So I'm going to have 1 over this x to the fourth plus 27 times 4x cubed. So we have 4x cubed over x to the fourth plus 27. So that derivative will be equal to 0 when 4x cubed is 0. So in other words, just at x equals 0. So we get a nice simple sign chart here. Um, the first derivative is 0 at 0. If I plug in something less than 0, this quantity is going to be negative. Something greater, it'll be positive. So f is decreasing and then increasing. So we have our function f is decreasing on negative infinity to 0 and increasing on 0 to infinity with a min a local min at 0, comma the log of 27. So remember, we plug that back into our original function. Okay. So now we also need to get some information from the, the second derivative. So we'll just recall that our first derivative is 4x cubed all over x to the fourth plus 27. So our second derivative here is going to require the quotient rule. So we're going to have to have that bottom function times the derivative of the top function, which is 12x squared, minus that top function, times the derivative of the bottom function, all over that bottom function squared. Okay, So we're going to have to multiply this out, try to see if we can get some things to cancel. So we've got 12x to the 6th plus 27 times 12x squared minus 16x to the 6th all over x to the fourth plus 27 squared. So let's see, when we combine those, we have 27 times 12x squared minus 4x to the sixth, all over x to the fourth plus 27 squared. Um, and it may help for me to do a little bit more factoring. I've got x squared and 4 common to both of those, so I have 4x squared times 27 times 3 minus x to the fourth. Okay, all over x to the fourth plus 27 squared. So 27 times 3 is 81. So we can replace that with 81. Okay, so now I need to know where is this second derivative equal to 0, and so it would be where that 4x squared times 81 minus x to the fourth would be equal to 0. So that would be at 0 as well as where 81 is equal to x to the fourth. So the fourth root of 81 would be 3 and negative 3. So we would get x is 3 and negative 3. So then I need to look at my sign chart for my second derivative. Okay. So I'd have negative 3, 0, and 3 on here. So I need to test the sign. So if I plug in something smaller than negative 3, like negative 4, negative 4 to the fourth is going to be bigger than 81. So I'm going to get something that's negative here. If I plug in something between negative 3 and 0, like negative 1, I'm going to get something positive. Again, if I plug in something between 0 and 3, like 1, I'm going to get something positive. So we don't have that alternating pattern. Um, if I plug in something bigger than 3, I'm going to get something negative. So this shows me f is concave down, and then concave up, and then concave down. So I only have inflection points at negative 3 and at 3. Okay. So I'm going to have to put together all these different pieces of information to talk about what my graph is actually going to look like. Okay. So to summarize here, we have we know we have a minimum at 0, comma the log of 27. 
we know that our function is increasing on 0 to infinity, decreasing on negative infinity to 0. I know I have inflection points at negative 3, comma, if I plug in negative 3, I'm going to get 81 plus 27, so I would have 10, excuse me, the log of 108. And I'd also have an inflection point at 3, comma, the log of 108. And I'm going to be concave up from negative 3 to 0 and 0 to 3, according to my, my previous slide, and concave down from negative infinity to negative 3, as well as from 3 to infinity. Okay. So I can use this information to sketch a graph. So I've got this min here at 0, natural log of 27. So we'll just kind of estimate where that is. And then I know I'm going to be increasing on, um, let's see, to the right of this and decreasing to the left. I also have these important points that are my inflection points, so I should graph those next. So negative 3 natural log of 108, well that's going to be bigger than this natural log of 27. So that turns out to be somewhere around here. Okay, so I've got those two inflection points. Um, so we've used this information, we got that information. So I have a switch in concavity at this point. I'm going to switch from being concave down to being concave up. So between negative 3 and 3, I'm going to be concave up. I also know that I'm going to be decreasing to the left and increasing to the right of 0. So we can start to use this information to sketch our picture. So let's see, I switch from being concave down to concave up at negative 3, so I'm going to have concave down, and then I'm concave up, and then I switch to being concave down. So I see that I am decreasing and then increasing, and I see that at these locations here I have a switch in concavity, and I have my min here at 0. So this is how we can put together this information to get a sketch. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about curve sketching um, in class, so please let me know if you have any questions.